This is a partisan question, perhaps for you, Peter. Um, it says, why do you think that um, nutrition research is so marginalised? Is it marginalised? Is it important? Do we need to be doing nutrition research, or do we know it all? I, I think the, the answer lies in the fact that uh, several times we've made comments to say that uh, the questions that are being asked nowadays are very much the same sort of questions that were being asked 30, 40 years ago in many, many aspects. We're refining our answers a little, but we're not really getting to the, the core elements of uh, understanding the, the relationship between exposure and, and outcome. To a certain extent, this does lie as a problem with nutritionists. I think nutritionists have traditionally liked to see positive results, and they've liked to work in animal models. And, for, and so frequently, one does not necessarily see uh, studies done where the exposure to a particular nutrient is controlled or graded to different levels and addresses some of the key elements of knowing how the body adapts its metabolism to the particular intakes of nutrients. How does the body get more of a nutrient? How does the body take it up, distribute it, and then get rid of it if it needs to? In toxicology, this is virtually done routinely. It's called absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. If one starts to look at nutritional data, you will very seldom find a composite of information that would actually bring together ADME information, even for the simplest of nutrients. You've heard an example where we, we don't know it properly for iron. Recently, I was involved with a review of copper and trying to understand how one could approach understanding copper metabolism. And if one then goes to the literature base on animal models and human models, one will find a vast amount of data involving more than two dose exposures for deficiencies and a vast amount of exposure for excess and virtually nothing in between apart from three or four uh, human studies on copper metabolism done in, done in California uh, by, by Judith Turnland. And that epitomizes a lot of the difficulties that, that face us in, in, in nutrition. The, the way of addressing this is something that uh, is, is being looked at in many ways. Uh, Part of the difficulty is that if one's looking at a toxic agent, it's easy to get funding for that sort of ADME information. ADME information. For a nutrient, well, it's, it doesn't excite uh, funders, and unless one can actually produce a policy problem related to that, that sort of research will not get funded. The next thing is some of the basic skills that are needed, and perhaps there'll be opportunities for those who are going to be at the event tomorrow to discuss this, because I think two or three of us were wanting to look at that, is to actually make sure we got the right skill base in nutrition. And I'm, I'm afraid we probably are not encouraging the right sort of skill bases using sort of modern techniques to get involved in nutrition. The, the reward there isn't there necessarily. And on top of that, even if they were able to do that, we just wouldn't be able easily always to translate that into policy or practice for the, for the most fundamental reason is the dietary composition tables we use seem very, very convenient, very nice, very helpful, but if one actually sat down and critically reviewed them, we would find really we haven't got much idea what is in our diet, what particular nutrients are, some of the key nutrients, some of the key counter-nutrients like phytate, some other forms of phosphate, aren't listed at all. It's very confusing. We can't even define fiber yet, to let alone sort of come up with some ideas. We talk about fat. Well, fat isn't a single entity any more than protein is. It all gets broken down to component parts and they all behave differently. 
we've got we, it's it's a mindset we've got to change and until we do change that we're not even going to know just how much is getting into the body from that indeterminate amount in the, in the diet so we don't know what our consumption is easily we don't know what our exposure is in terms of the amount that's getting into the body and that makes it the incentive for trying to get our handle on the metabolism that much weaker. But I strongly believe that is the sort of research we've got to start developing because at the moment there's a lot of phenomenology in nutrition. It gets away by calling itself public health nutrition but um, seldom does it really produce clear-cut answers does it produce answers that are free of any modifiers of effect or confounders and other things that have to be allowed for? Until we can actually get to the purer science, we're not going to be able to build up the better picture and improve epidemiology. Epidemiology is in one of these sources of the confusion, I think, that runs in nutrition at the moment. Thank Just you, Peter. Just a brief answer. A brief answer. Thank you very much. Um, it's a little bit yeah, like... I wanted like, to add something on that, if I, yes. if I could. Uh, you know, I mentioned before about the essential nutrients in the 20th century, and most of them were discovered in the first half. And, and we have lots and lots of data on how much of, a, of these nutrients it takes to prevent the deficiency diseases. That's by and large, those are by and large not the questions that people want to know today in nutrition. They want to know whether if I consume extra or if I consume some important different phytonutrients like lycopene and tomatoes or things like that, it will somehow prevent a chronic disease or cancer or heart disease or it will make me, you know, uh, not get dumb as fast as I am, as I age, etc. These are long-term longitudinal questions that can only be answered by very big human studies that involve large populations and that cost vast amounts of money if they can be designed properly to do them. Drug companies do this because they have a, something they can give in a pill. It's much more difficult to do this with a food, first of all, because there's no null group. There's nobody who's not eating as you have a person taking a drug and then you have people not taking a drug. Secondly, uh, you have to be able to design experiments that use real foods and you have to have people that will keep these diets for long periods of time. And we have very limited data of that sort that can tell us convincingly that we can use nutrients to do things like prevent certain diseases and the like. In fact, most of the data, uh, you know, for things like cognition, as you said, you know, and things are, are all null, they, you know, they haven't shown any effect. But you have to realize that this is it, 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 it will take vast public research efforts to do the studies that will allow us to convincingly ask the questions that many people in the audience want to know the answer to. Thank you very much, Dennis.